The first sunshine in several weekends brought more than 5,000 racing fans to the Yellow River drag strip near Covington, Georgia, about 35 miles east of Atlanta. About halfway through the program, one of the high-powered dragsters, ironically called funny cars because of their elongated shape, spun out of control and into the crowd. Witnesses said the driver deployed a parachute in an attempt to slow the speeding car, but it didn't help. Traveling at an estimated 150 miles an hour, the car careened up a small embankment and over a fence into the crowd. Eleven people were killed and about 50 others were injured. Some of the injured had to be taken to hospitals as far away as Atlanta for treatment. The driver, Houston Platt of Atlanta, walked away from the wreckage. This film of the accident was taken by amateur photographers. A short time later, the director of the professional racing for American Hot Rod Association condemned the Yellow River track as an outlaw. Rich Lynch said the strip is 100% unsafe, especially in its lack of precautions for crowd safety. This is Ken Lee Jones reporting. Channel 19, WHNT Television, Huntsville. Missy Ming in New Hope, Georgia, will talk with a survivor that crawled out of this wreckage and made it. Michael Lamoth in New Hope, Georgia, the big question is why. Good evening. Port Harris is sitting in for Missy Ming this evening, who is helping in the preparation of the Action News 19 special at 6.30, Disaster at New Hope, Georgia. The death toll from yesterday's Southern Airways Flight 242 has now reached 68. The latest fatality is 50-year-old Glenn Bradley of Richmond, Virginia. In the meantime, federal investigators said today they believe the pilot of the Southern plane, Captain William McKenzie, was trying to land the aircraft when the crash occurred. Preliminary review of the wreckage indicated the plane's landing gear was down with the flaps in a landing configuration. McKenzie nearly succeeded in landing the plane on Highway 92 just outside New Hope, Georgia, but one wing smashed into a telephone pole, sending it skidding across the road into a small grocery store. Two gasoline pumps were sheared off, causing an explosion, the fire killing several New Hope residents. The plane then cartwheeled into a stop at a wooded area and suddenly burst into flames. One of the first five or six people there, and there's just people and fire and smoke everywhere. Were there many people trying to get out of the plane? They were already out there laying on the ground, in the fire and some of them out. There was nobody you couldn't see in the fuselage. Wasn't enough of it to see. Did there seem to be any survivors? I saw about 10 or 15 that come out of the plane surviving. But 24 passengers have survived. Those survivors are being treated in hospitals throughout Georgia. Some patients are listed from serious to satisfactory condition. And the ones that are still alive have something in common. Most of the survivors of this tragedy sat here in the rear section of the plane. When the flight left Huntsville, it was raining. Ten minutes into the flight, heavier rains, then hail. One survivor told me lightning struck one of the wings, knocked one of the engines out, and then the other. For Jim Phillips of Huntsville, a passenger on the plane, it was a nightmare. But everything happened so quick, he says no one panicked. They only followed the instructions given by the stewardess for the crash landing. And then I knew that we were going down. And, uh... I just sat there waiting. Uh, I couldn't see out. I just look over a seat and I could see some part of the ground and we were going into it. And uh, prior to that, though, I was uh, talking with the stewardess in the jump seat about the emergency door, opening it, how to open it in case we needed it. So that took up some of my time there. And uh, right after that, uh, we grabbed our ankles and hit the ground. And. Uh, it seemed like it bumped a couple of times, pretty good bump that I could see out of the corner of my eyes. And then it made one big bump, and I guess that's when it tore apart. You know, it was stopped immediately. And when it stopped, I undid my belt, got up, jumped out. And I think that's when the fire hit me. It seemed like a wall of flame. I just kept running.